can i upload the presentation uh, ma'am just a minute i'll be introducing you then uh, then you will start to Mama, I hope my screen is visible. Yes. So, a very good morning to all the participants of this AICT sponsored one week online short term training program on water quality complication, restoration, and environmental conservation of existing water bodies, module 2. So, we have with us Dr. Sorja Ghosh Nayam. Who is a principal scientist and associate professor, engineering science, Academy of Scientific and Innovative Research, leader, membrane and separation technology division, CSIR, Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute, Kolkata. She is an expert in water and wastewater treatment with special references to ceramic membrane development and applications, membrane bioreactor and photobioreactor, membrane contactor carbon dioxide sequestration, biomass and biofuel generation. She has also won excellent paper awards at the 6th International Conference on Solid Waste Management, 8 best paper awards which includes oral and paper poster presentations at the international and national conferences. She is a mentor in Women Scientist Project of DST and she has numerous publications in journals and esteemed research grants to her credentials. I thank you, ma'am, personally, and welcome you on behalf of IPS Academy, Institute of Engineering and Science, Indore, and uh, uh, request you to please uh, take over and start the session, ma'am. Thank you, Dr. Devanshi. So Devansi, so much for your kind introduction. I am uploading my presentation now. Is the presentation visible to you? Yes, ma'am, it's visible now. Okay. So, thank you all for the for the kind invitation and providing me the opportunity to speak in the esteemed forum on the water quality complication, restoration, and environmental conservation of existing water bodies. I am Shourja Ghosh, principal scientist from the Membrane and Separation Technology Division of CSIR Central Glass and Ceramic Research Institute. My topic is on ceramic membrane technology for sustainable treatment of water and industrial wastewater. To briefly introduce about CGCRI, it's a pioneer CSIR lab. It is among the first four national laboratories established under the Council of Scientific and Industrial Research established in the year of 1950. The mission of the institute is to develop various products based on the strategic mission as well as to benefit the economic, environmental and societal aspects of the people of India concentrated on the various multifaceted aspects of glass and ceramics and related products. Coming back to my topic, my topic is on ceramic membrane technology. So I will briefly introduce membrane-driven separation processes. You must be aware that membrane processes is an advanced mode of separation technique now frequently used for water and wastewater treatment processes. So what is the membrane? It's a semi-permeable barrier which allows certain components to pass through the membrane surface and retain some components selectively. 
Based on various types of driving forces, there may be physical, chemical, as well as external, like electrical field as the driver. Accordingly, during the process, treated water is coming out from the membrane, it is called permeate, and the feed solution is getting concentrated during the time of operation. So, broadly, membranes are divided into two categories, biological as well as synthetic. Biological membrane is the inherent membranes established in our body itself, which continuously act to separate toxic products from our system. And synthetic membranes are man-made membranes. So, UPAC classification divides membranes into three categories based on the pore size of the membrane. One is the macroporous membrane, that is the large pore size greater than 50 nanometer. It can range up to 1 micron. And the mesoporous, it lies in the range of 2 to 50 nanometer. And then comes the microporous for the ultrafine separation. Pore size is less than 2 nanometer. We can divide the membrane processes according to the drive process. So mostly widely used processes are pressure driven membrane processes. This can be broadly categorized into four groups like microfiltration, ultrafiltration, nano and reverse osmosis. So what is microfiltration? It is the large pore size membranes wherein the required driving force is 10 to 40 psi and pore size of the microfiltration range is generally in the micron range 0.5 to 1 or 2 micron it separates mainly the suspended and turbid particles from the water then comes the ultrafiltration range it covers a wide range of pore sizes like from 10 to 100 nanometer it is called ultrafiltration required pressure is 10 to 100 psi and then the it separates large amount of uh, contaminants like microorganisms, pathogens, colloidal and macromolecules. Coming to the nano, the pressure, differ pressure difference is larger since it is a small pore size membrane. It's 100 to 500 psi pore size and the pore size range is generally 2 to 5 nanometer. While it re retains the dyes and some other nano-sized molecules, which are some toxic components like emerging contaminants from the water and wastewater system, it passes the water and salts through the membrane. Then coming to the lowest pore size membrane process, you all are aware, reverse osmosis. It requires a large pressure difference to act. It is the generally 100 to 800 psi. Pore size range is generally in the angstrom range and it can separate all the dissolved salts as well as other contaminants like the, mainly for the salt dissolved uh, contaminants from water. According to the concentration difference, dialysis is the membrane process wherein it acts on the molecular weight cutoff generally greater than 1000 range. Another is electrodialysis, which requires a electrical field, a voltage difference acts to separate the ions from the solution. And then coming to the gas separation processes, it requires 1 to 100 pressure difference and it separates various types of pore sizes like the zeolite membranes and other gas separation membrane. It separates carbon dioxide, sulfur dioxide and other gaseous components. So if we classify the membranes through ages, initially the first generation membrane was the liquid membrane. Then comes the second generation membrane, polymeric membrane. It is widely used in the market, commercially available in wide range of pore sizes and membrane materials. And these are applied in the industry in large scale processes. Coming to the third generation membrane, this is the ceramic membrane. These membranes are made of inorganic material. My lecture will be focused on ceramic membranes because our institute is engaged in the ceramic membrane based research. These membranes are still not very widely used or available in the market compared to the polymeric membranes. But these membranes are growingly in, uh, increasing because of its multifaceted features that I will explain in later. 
and above ceramic membrane the fourth generation membrane is the ceramic polymer composite membrane which also we are working in our laboratory so coming to the polymeric membrane there are various types of polymeric material available for the membrane like polypropylene ptfe pvdf cellulose acetate so these membranes are either in hydrophilic or hydrophobic nature their advantages are relatively easily according to the tailor made pore sizes these membranes are of low cost material easy to use and they provide symmetric structures Coming to the demerits or disadvantages, these since these are made of polymeric material, so they have the difficulty to withstand high temperature. They cannot withstand high pH condition in the industrial environment. Pressure bearing the high pressure is another problem, and these membranes has lower lifespan, so difficult to reuse in the process. So ceramic membranes, these are the third generation membrane. can they build a sustainable pathway for water and wastewater treatment technologies the numerous research is currently going on in the field of ceramic membrane across the world because of their sustainable nature such membranes are made of inorganic material which are high as well as robust to accommodate in the industrial harsh conditions this development of ceramic membrane was initiated in france in the institute of european dis membrane mobilier france parallelly the work was carried out in the twent university netherlands characteristics of this third generation membranes are this membranes can withstand high temperature pressure generally they are made of inorganic material like titania zirconia alumina so metal oxide membranes and they provide asymmetric structure like there is a macroporous support of larger pore sizes over which on the top layer a thin layer is coated on the membrane surface so this membrane acts selectively to pass certain components and retain the desired components pore support provides basically the support to the membrane body it allows high flux which is required for industrial processes and then it can bear high pressure as well as the membrane can be cleaned rigorously because these are inert material inorganic material so during industrial processes membrane need to be thoroughly cleaned so both acid and alkali was they can withstand so the initial cost of such membranes can be high but then the operating cost in the long run will be lower because these membranes are um, provide life span of even 10 to 12 years this is the typical schematic view of a ceramic membrane such membranes are generally tubular in nature so feed solution is passed to the membrane and then this bacteria and other components are separated and treated water is coming out during the process we provide air diffusion or mechanical backing to displace the lay accumulated layer from the membrane surface and to regain the flux these are various types of ceramic membranes available generally in the market or in the research institute so these mostly are multi channel membranes there are several channels in the membrane either they are from circular as well as various configuration like hexagonal and star shaped different type of channel configuration is available so preparation of pore ceramic support and membrane this asymmetric ceramic membranes are characterized by a multi layered structure with progressively decreasing pore size so the bottom layer has shows highest pore size whereas gradually the pore size is reduced going to the top layer so the thin membrane layers are generally deposited over a mechanically strong porous support made of generally membrane is made up usually alumina or composition of alumina and clay these are sintered at a high temperature higher than 1500 degree centigrade the preparation method and characteristics of the porous ceramic support have an important influence on the adhesion nature and resistance of the 
asymmetric membrane deposited on its surface. There are the various processes to prepare like dry pressing, extrusion, paste pressing, centrifugal casting, doctor blade, gel casting for preparation of the ceramic membranes at required temperature. This is the microstructure of a cross-sectional view of ceramic membrane. So you can observe the bottom side is the macroporous pore side, pore, porous support over that an intermediate layer is given to gradually reduce the pore size and the filtering layer is the it is the lowest pore size so this is another membrane ultra filtration membrane of membralox company so this is also a asymmetric structure provides the future candidates to build a sustainable pathway in the water and wastewater treatment technologies is ceramic membrane as well as ceramic polymer composite membrane. Why ceramic polymer composite membrane? Because it be brings the feature of both ceramic as well as the polymeric membrane. Ceramic membrane where the bottommost support is the inorganic support. It provides robustness as well as it, it is a large pore size membrane. So it can increase the high flux, which is a required criteria in industrial processes. And top layer is given a polymeric membrane, polymeric material to reduce the pore size very selectively to the desired separation required. In CGCRI, we are carrying out research on ceramic membranes. So we prepare ceramic support in various configuration like single, multi-channel, capillary configuration as well as hollow fiber. We, we carry out water treatment for iron and arsenic removal. Then wastewater treatment, there is various mode of processes compared to apart from ultra filtration nano filtration we have the membrane bioreactor process then membrane photobioreactor process industrial wastewater treatment comprises of textile tannery pharmaceutical electroplating as well as various other sectors we develop membrane contactor process for solute recovery from system as well as carbon dioxide capture then drinking water purification brackish wastewater treatment as well as gray water treatment and the membranes we prepare generally are of alumina zirconia microfiltration ultra filtration is of titania and bentonite clay then ceramic polymer composite membrane which are in the nano filtration range then there is the hydrophobic ceramic membrane which is the demand for specific applications that we, i will explain in later so the ceramic membrane development at CGCRI, this is the single channel as well as the 19 channel membranes. These are commercially used. So we have developed the community plants for iron and arsenic removal. Basically there are seven channel as well as 19 channel. Inner channel diameter is around 4 mm and the outer diameter is around 34 mm. Length of the membranes are one meter length. These are various types of membranes prepared at CGCRI. This is the single channel membrane, top one, whereas this is seven channel and this is 19 channel. These are capillary membranes. So we made compact membrane module. There is 61 membranes in this module. Then we gradually reduce the diameter for the hollow fiber range 2 mm by 1.4 mm ODID. So these membranes are provide lower footprint area and compact module. So suitable for high surface area applications. Ceramic ultra filtration membrane developed at CGCR. This is the cross sectional view of a zirconia based ultra filtration membrane prepared on alumina support tube. So CGCRI, in CGCRI, we have developed indigenous composition for preparing the support tube. It involves a cost-effective composition of alumina and clay. So this membrane not only increases the mechanical strength, rather it decreases the cost of the support tube because ceramic membrane cost is a barrier in industrial application. So to overcome this problem, 
we have developed this indigenous composition of clay and alumina so over this support the zirconia based alta filtration membrane layer is deposited so this is a micron range thickness membrane layer on the provided by single step coating this is the zirconia alta filtration membrane mid pore diameter is 30 to 40 nanometer this membrane was applied for grey water treatment in the domestic sector grey water is produced so we had tried to separate treat the water with this alta filtration this re um, resulted in turbidity removal 99 percent considerable removal reduction of cot dod oil and grease contaminant and removal of tss and mpn that is the microorganisms were completely removed removed whereas the oil and grease content was also significantly removed this is another membrane titania based alta filtration membrane this membrane is mainly prepared for drinking water application so the ultra fine layer of the titania membrane it is very inert and single layer coating was applied this is the surface microstructure you can see uniform layer is provided this membrane can enable to remove all the pathogenic organisms as well as organic matters this technology is in the process of upscaling for establishment of larger capacity drinking water treatment plant this is another membrane made of synthetic apatite powder coated membrane. So hydroxy apatite powder is a ceramic material it was used. It is um, to make a cost effective UF membrane and the pore size range we could achieve is 2 to 6 nanometer. During the coating, no surface crack was observed. This is a positive aspect because if surface crack is found, then the membrane layer is getting wasted. So continuous membrane surface could be established and average pore diameter ranges, whereas the alta filtration, lower alta filtration range is 2 to 6 nanometer, higher alta filtration it is 35 nanometer. This is a capillary element module. It is used for gas liquid separation system because this provides a high surface area in the lower footprint area. Coming to the drinking water purification. So sustainability of CSR CGCRI technology for producing potable water. This process can enable removal of iron, arsenic and turbid and saline river water and the plants have been installed in the various states of northeastern region as well as eastern region like west bengal bihar as well as in several locations of south india the technology developed it involves porous ceramic elements in mono and multi-channel configuration then ceramic membrane based technology for iron removal from groundwater because you know that iron is a very concern for the groundwater treatment and then the arsenic removal which is a emerging problem in the eastern and northeastern region of the country so a hybrid technology is developed which can simultaneously remove arsenic and iron using nano sized adsorbent and cross flow microfiltration using ceramic membrane so so far the has installed over 50 number of iron and arsenic removal plants depending on various capacity. So generally the capacity is 5000 liter per day in the northeastern region as well as in the along with the association of the public health engineering department and border security force. There have been 43 number of plants installed to provide safe drinking water to the people of border security force in Nodia district in West Bengal. So we have uh, filed patent for process for preparing water having an arsenic level of less than 10 ppb. This is the US patent. Then other patents also have been established like process for the preparation of arsenic free water method of for manufacture of porous ceramics for used 
arsenic free water a process for making pura ceramics for pressure filtration as well as to produce water with arsenic less than 10 ppb from arsenic contaminated ground water these are the pictures of the ceramic membrane based plants arsenic and iron removal in the ground water so this is a This is the water quality we achieved is as per who recommended limits for arsenic and iron and the process enables simultaneous removal of arsenic and iron. The technology is capable of treating raw water with high concentration of arsenic up to 1.5 ppm and iron up to 15 ppm. The advantage of the process is it generates low volume of sludge. This is the flux data in the uh, with time we observed in the community plant using a 55 element module of varying turbidity. So you can observe the flux in liter per hour is generally up to 2000 LPH starting from 200 LPH. This is the picture of raw groundwater and this is the ceramic membrane treated water. And then we have combined the technology of ceramic membrane along with reverse osmosis from our sister lab Central Salt and Marine Chemical Research Institute to provide salt free treated water from the river brackish water river water which is produced in the river Ichamuti river. So a big plant has been installed which combines ceramic membrane plant as well as then the second stage is the RO plant. So altogether, this provides very pure, pure drinking water. This is the domestic uses alta filtration module, small capacity. It involves capillary membranes. Inner diameter is 1.9 mm, outer diameter is 3.1 mm. So <coughs> the total filtration area is 0 0.055 meter square. This Unit can be used for several purposes like domestic potable water filtration from bacteria, organic and inorganic suspended particles, as well as it can be applied for domestic kitchen water filtration and reclamation. So we have published research article on this aspect wherein we can use our kitchen water produced in the domestic kitchen that we can reuse for various applications. So this will enable to reduce our freshwater consumption. As well as this unit can be used for lab scale experimental studies in the universities and research laboratories for side stream membrane bioreactor processes and as a ceramic alterfiltration unit um, for industrial wastewater treatment. This is a typical arsenic removal plant, 2500 LPD liter per day capacity installed at various places of West Bengal. So such areas are highly contaminated with arsenic. People are suffering in great extent and this ceramic membrane plant enables arsenic and iron removal. This is the plant installed in our CGCRI complex to provide residential complex to provide arsenic and iron free drinking water. <coughs> These plants are installed at various places of northeastern region. You can see this is Assam, Orunachal as well as Manipur. So these are some of the membrane modules manufactured at the factory. And to this while these are of stainless steel module to reduce the initial cost PVC module is being prepared depending on the application demand. So this in, um, uh, reduces the initial cost of the plant. For high capacity output, these plants are used. And this is the river water purification I told just now. This is a combination process of MF microfiltration and RO. So this membrane is used, this process is used for treating the river water which is highly saline adjacent to the Sundarbon area. So there is TDS as well as there are several other turbid and suspended contaminants. So 
application of uh, combi combination technology is required and that has been done to provide 8000 liter per day drinking water sap people of west bengal so this is the drinking water treatment plan for the border security force so these people are getting benefited for the from the membrane treated drinking water and 51 numbers of such plants are installed in north 24 parganas district in the border security force as well as other locations of nodia and bihar so accordingly we have transferred our technology to our various licenses the main technology transferred are ceramic membrane based high capacity modules for pretreatment of turbid water for polishing of iron and arsenic contaminated water using microfiltration technique. Then ceramic membrane based technology for arsenic and iron removal from groundwater. So we have various several licenses, the technology from CGCRI and they install the plants at various locations. Now I am coming to the wastewater treatment using ceramic membrane technology. We carry, carry out study on various types of wastewater. These are broadly categorized like textile, tannery, municipal and domestic sector. While in the textile sector, mainly there are two types of wastewater produced in the region of eastern India in the West Bengal and other states like one is the sulfur dye containing water this is used this dye is used for dyeing of the jeans denim clothes we all use so this is a toxic dye and very much harmful for the environment and another is the reactive dye effluent this is very widely dyeing of cotton garments as well as the hosiery garments so these dyes are highly soluble in nature and during the process of dyeing large amount of dyes get unfixed from the cloth so this comes directly into the wastewater so bearing of this industrial equipment contaminates the environment severely so we have selected these two systems for textile effluent and another industry is the tannery which is also high volume of water consuming industry and produces con uh, considerable loaded effluent. So we collected effluent from various sector like primary clarifier, secondary clarifier as well as the composite effluent that is coming from the con uh, end of the process. Municipal wastewater, it's generally produced in municipal sewage treatment plant, the water is getting collected. So we have concentrated on emerging contaminants in the surface water. What are those that I'll explain in detail? Some of those are pesticides, pharmaceuticals and personal care components. These are together called PPCP. So while there has been the conventional pollutants and technologies have been invented for removal of such contaminants like heavy metals and other known contaminants, recent research is focused on emerging contaminants in water. So these emerging contaminants, why these are called emerging? Because these are gradually recently emerged. Earlier this, their effect was not so detected and their concentration was not observed in the surface water as well as in the municipal water. Because of gradual usage of pesticides and other fertilizers and pharmaceutical products as well as lot of personal care products we use and lot of products are wasted and they are gradually thrown into the environment. So they are gradually leaching out and coming to the water bodies. So their effects still are not very much studied in detail, but all, most of those components are endocrine disrupting components. So they gradually reduce or disturb our endocrine disruptions in human body, as well as it affects severely the aquatic creatures. 
so these components removal is now a concern and the recent researches are focused on this emerging contaminants removal then coming to the domestic wastewater mainly we collected the kitchen sink wastewater which is highly oil grease and surfactant containing wastewater with kitchen basin so we collected wastewater from a ccri canteen and then we collected wastewater from residential complex this is the gray water from bathroom and as well as the kitchen units of the residential units so these contain organic loading as well as the personal care products oil and grease bod cod everything so in in our study the wastewater treatment comprises of broadly four types one is the membrane photobioreactor process what is a membrane photobioreactor it's a closed photobioreactor system wherein the algal biomass is produced using the wastewater so algae has the capability to consume the nutrients as well as it can consume various metal and specific contaminants in the wastewater in turn the water is getting treated and we obtain biomass which is of high value why because then we extract biofuel from this biomass so this process has we have designed closed photobioreactor system using our ceramic membrane so this is while there have been few applications of polymeric membranes in the photobioreactor process application of ceramic membrane in the photobioreactor process is not done previously so this is first time done in ccri it's a unique process it has the capability to bio sequestrate bio sequestration of co2 treatment of industrial wastewater and we in turn we obtain value added biomass that can be used for extraction of biodiesel bioethanol as well as biohydrogen so we'll discuss the case studies in detail another is the treatment and recycling of industrial effluent like textile tannery and printing industry so printing industry also contain large amount of toxic dyes in the effluent so this needs severe attention because these dyes can cause very much harm to the environment coming to the emerging contaminants so we focused on pesticide and pharmaceutical and personal care products of selected range and the toxic sludge management which is a by product of wastewater treatment so if we consider only the water treatment or wastewater treatment simultaneously each of the process generate some sludge so we need to take care of this toxic sludge we cannot throw it in the environment so we have developed technology for immobilization of the toxic sludge in the glass matrix so this is uh, done for arsenic sludge you know for arsenic sludge cannot be disposed anywhere so people are just keeping the sludge trapped in the in some container or anything and it is uh, remaining as such so if we can use this in some useful product then it it will avoid leaching in the environment as well as there will be the sustainable management of the sludge so we try to immobilize arsenic and other heavy metal loaded sludge in the glass matrix this is the case study for treatment of textile dye house effluent so in outskirts of kolkata city there are large number of textile units which use for dyeing of cotton and hosiery garments so during the reactive dyeing process as i told earlier large amount of salt is used and alkali is used to fix the dye on the cotton surface and in the process large amount of dye gets unfixed so this dyes come directly into the wastewater 
depending on the dyeing process the concentration of dyes can range up to even 150 ppm in the effluent so normally the small scale industries they don't have any organized effluent treatment plan so they just use there is a pond type system they just you add new large amount of coagulant and flocculant to settle the dyes and collect the clear water from the top side so these large volume is large and it gets deposited gradually then they dispose it maybe some toxic sludge management procedure or even they can directly dispose it in the environment also the settled water is not of that much quality like dye concentration considerable remains there so what we have done we have used a combined technology so we have prepared since these dyes are in the nano filtration range and so these dyes direct and of high concentration in the effluent if we directly pass through the membrane the membrane will get fouled so this will not be suitable for industry so we have developed a product biosorbent prepared from sugarcane bagasse so this is a juice industry waste you can tell so this bagasse was surface treated to produce biosorbent which is of high surface area as well as large diluvial capacity use this biosorbent in combination with our ceramic microfiltration process this is the microstructure of the membrane before use and after use you can see deposition of the materials on the pores of the membrane this is unwashed membrane surface so if we wash and clean thoroughly with the chem chemicals this membrane will be again regenerated this is the raw effluent reactive dye effluent and this is the treated effluent similarly this is the another effluent it, this is from red color this is yellow color and this is the sulfur dye effluent so this is used for produced from the jeans denim clothes washing and dyeing processes so this membrane this effluent was treated and the treated water was coming like this so if we see the parameters in the waste water cod value was a raw textile effluent 2000 to 2300 even we can see more than this cod value so after treatment of this combination process the cod value is coming in the range of 160 to 200 ppm well the bot value is not that much because this is a textile effluent here the chemical contaminants are more apart from this it contains a large amount of salt in the effluent and contains the lead which is a toxic metal so this is in the 40 to 60 ppm in the feet and after treatment it comes to 0.04 to 0.1 ppm in this process since the biosorbent adsorbs the dyes as well as it can adsorb many organic constituents and metals so in turn the flux decline was quite low less than 5% after one hour this is significant at scale application because if we have large flux decline then our process output will be very low so overall the combined process resulted in removal of higher than 91% 93% of total organic carbon and had the 99% removal of dyes and heavy metals from the textile effluent so we try to observe the recycling ability of the membrane treated water for this we have used the membrane treated permeate in the, again in the dyeing process of the industry so this work was done in collaboration with the local textile industry so this is the various samples of clothes c is the control sample used fresh water was used in dyeing of this cloth whereas p is the membrane treated water dyeing of this cloth sample similarly this is this is light shade medium shade and this is the dark shade so you can observe while there is a good 
color fixation for the low light shade and medium shade. However, if we go for the dark shade, there is an uneven dyeing and some patchy marks are obtained. Why this is? Because the more the concentration of the dyes high, we go for darker shade, the more there will be salt consumption. And consequently, the treated water contains a large amount of, even it is 40 to 60 gram per liter TDS content in textile water. So this TDS could not be removed completely by this combination process. So for this, this unevenness was observed. So what is the solution we found? That in this combination process, as a polishing stage, we have to apply the reverse osmosis process for complete recycling of the textile apron. So this study is currently now going on in our lab and we are finding positive results. So this can be applied for low, medium as well as dark shade dyeing process and successful implementation of this process will result in large amount of fresh water reduction of the large amount of fresh water consumption in textile industry because this is the most high volume of water consuming industry so now the zero waste discharge mandate is implemented in various parts of the country particularly in the south india region wherein the in tirupati and tirupur and everywhere there is a large number there are no um, discharge of textile water is allowed. So this technology will help to recycle water. Then we have designed membrane bioreactor process. It is an environment friendly process. This generates very low, low amount of sludge. So this has the very advantages. What is a membrane bioreactor? It's a combination of a membrane along with a bioreactor. You know that this bioactivated sludge process is used widely in the conventional wastewater treatment plant. So this um, after biological treatment in the secondary clarifier, the sludge is allowed to settle and the <coughs> is collected from the top side. Instead of if we add a membrane in this process along with the bioreactor, it will help to better control the process, like we can control the HRT hydraulic retention time and the sludge retention time independently, as water will be much more high quality because it will completely retain the microorganisms used in the bioreactor process. So this treated water will be very much high quality and it can be reused for wide range of applications. So there are mainly two configurations of membrane bioreactor process. One is side stream mode, another is submerged mode. In the submerged mode, the membrane module is inserted inside the feed tank itself. And time to time vacuum is applied to collect the treated water from the system. Whereas this is, this is a side stream process where the membrane module is attached outside of the feed stream. So this feed in from the biological process, bioreactor, the feed goes to the membrane process. And then all the microorganism and residual or contaminant, everything get retained and the high quality treated water is obtained from the process. So this is the ceramic ultrafiltration membrane in tubular configuration. This is the microstructure. And we had used it for treatment of textile apron. So uh, microorganism consortia was used for treating this reactive dye containing apron. And we found that combination of three bacteria were enabled to completely degrade these dyes in the treated water in the industrial apron. And this is the apron from the bioreactor process. And this is the treated water after the MBR process. So you can see gradual the difference. And then we perform toxicity study with the treated water to understand the toxic nature of the or the risk associated with 
disposal of such apron. So while we conduct a toxicity study on a fish system, H fossilis, this is the micronuclei observed in the blood cell of the fish. So this shows that we compared with the control system and we found that no much toxic effect is observed in the micronuclei of the blood cell of the particular fish. So the fresh water treated sample and this is the membrane treated sample. So this shows no gross difference. Concluding that the membrane treated water is safe for various types of uses, reuses as well as it is safe to discharge again in the fresh water bodies. This is a typical study conducted with the cosmetic effluent. What is cosmetic effluent? This is this wastewater was collected from a spa in the Kolkata city. So this water content, we try to explore the efficiency of the MVR process for removal of certain emerging contaminants. So this Wastewater collected from a beauty parlor or spa consists of mainly we focused on three contaminants. One is the dyes, which is used for hair color. Then triclosan. This is a common component used in various types of lotion, sunscreen, as well as other shampoo, conditioner everywhere. And another is the surfactant. So the, we focused on these three components and we developed, we used our ceramic ultrafiltration membrane based bioreactor process. So this was the original water cosmetic effluent collected from the spa after the hair dyeing process. And this is the treated water. So here again, we have uh, developed an isolated consortium we have studied in various combination and found a typical combination is effective for removal degradation of these components. And then we used membrane bioreactor process. This is the membrane microstructure used for the study. So again, the toxicity analysis study was done in terms of oxidative stress and comet acid to observe the micronucleus count. So what was the conclusion? Cytogenotoxic potential of the effluent being generated due to the overuse and discharge of untreated pharmaceuticals and personal care products, combinedly called PPCPs, before and after MBR treatment. The three primary aspects of these types of new generation effluent were color, triclosan, and surfactant content. And this is the detailed characterization of the wastewater before, during various stages of the treatment process. So this is the raw equipment. MPN count was 91. Residual color, we found 100%. COD was as high as 4,000 ppm. Dissolved oxygen was 1.7 ppm. And then high turbidity as well as total organic carbon was 159.7 ppm. So after the biotreatment process, the MPN count is considerably increased. This is obvious because we are using biological system. We are developing the isolated consortium in the wastewater to degrade the organic content. And then the accordingly, the solid content also is increased in the biological bioreactor process. When we applied the ultrafiltration UMBR process, we found MPN count you can observe, it is almost insignificant, completely free, you can say. Color removal was higher than 99%, 98.62%. COD removal was 98.66%, it is around 55 COD, so this can be safely discharged into the environment. DO dissolved oxygen is increased considerably and turbidity is below 1 ppm. Accordingly, the QOC value and total nitrogen, total general nitrogen is also reduced considerably. 
So we found that using the bacterial cons consortium E. coli, Bacillus species, and Pseudomonas and Sigella species, these are the effective responsible microorganisms for degradation. Toxicity study was conducted in catfish age fossilis. It revealed that the genotoxic raw effluent indicated a risk to aquatic life. Since you can see the effluent quality of the wastewater, so this has considerable genotoxic potential in the environment. Wherein the ultrafiltration based membrane bioreactor treatment produced safe water, which posed no significant toxic impacts on exposed organisms and may therefore considered for safe discharge of the water for industrial purpose or various types of reuses. The process provides highly efficient and convenient technology for treatment of wastewater both on qualitative and quantitative parameters. This is the skim uh, plant photograph installed in the pieces of centralized effluent treatment plant, common effluent treatment plant at Kolkata leather complex, Bantala. So we have installed this plant adjacent to the secondary clarifier. This is the secondary clarifier. This is the membrane. After the secondary clarifier, the water coming out still contains high amount of COD and BOD we found. So this water, if we provide a second stage of treatment, this can be, can this water be reused in the tanning process itself? So this was the subject of our study. And accordingly, we have performed the membrane filtration, which resulted in around 70% reduction of COD and turbidity reduction was 98%. So this treated water, we tried to use in the leather dyeing process. This was done in collaboration with our sister lab, Central Leather Research Institute, CLRI Chennai. So this is the weight processing of leather. This is the cow hide, piece of cow hide dyed in the, this C is the control system dyed using fresh water. This is the experimental system dyed using membrane treated water. So we found encouraging result here in the higher dye uptake was obtained in the treated water. And this leather sample showed comparable mechanical strength, tonsia strength and other parameters required for the leather, tanned leather. So this shows a uh, avenue for effective recycling of tannery equipment by ceramic microfiltration membrane. As you can see the characteristics of untreated and membrane treated effluent. The TTS value in the untreated effluent is quite high. In the membrane treated also there is not much reduction in TTS because this is the ceramic microfiltration membrane not for dissolved solutes. And the TSS is in the range and there is a reduction. Overall we can say that about 82% reduction of COD was obtained and turbidity value was below 1 in tube. The proposed treatment process was quite effective for reduction of organic and other interfering impurities, which would have otherwise rendered a trend from secondary clarifier unable for reuse. So the objective was to produce recyclable water quality generation. So this is the membrane flux for various COD feed, COD higher COD feed shows lower flux as well as the lower COD feed shows higher flux. And this is the detailed picture of the control leather sample and treated water leather sample. So the various characteristics of this leather sample, tensile strength in the control sample and treated water, you can see this comparable range. So show is the Strong tear strength and grain busting strength, and dye uptake was considerably high. So, the treated water is suitable for leather tanning process in the wet finishing process. And this application of this process can reduce the fresh water consumption as well as minimize wastewater discharge in the environment.
Now this is the arsenic sludge management. As I discussed earlier that arsenic removal is a growing problem in the in India, Bangladesh, Nepal and various countries. So while the <coughs> ceramic membrane technology can remove arsenic from the water to the below who described PPP level, then in turn the process generates an sludge. So arsenic rich sludge, disposal of this sludge is a problem. So what we have done, we have developed iron oxide nanoparticle by green root. So this is the aloe vera plant. So we used aloe vera extract to with the ferric chloride precursor to produce iron oxide nanoparticles. This is a nano adsorbent used in combination with a ceramic microfiltration membrane for removal of arsenic. So this is the microstructure of the nanoparticles. You can see very nice rod shaped nanoparticles are produced. This is the team picture of the nanoparticles. And we use this for arsenic remediation. After arsenic remediation, microstructure observed is like this. Now these iron oxide nanoparticles absorb arsenic and gradually gets rich in the arsenic content. So we use this in the glass matrix. So phosphate glass was prepared. In this glass, glass requires certain amount of arsenic. So in as an arsenic source, we provided our arsenic loaded sludge. And then we observe the leaching study with the produced glass sample. No arsenic leaching was observed during the experimental tenure. And colored glass is produced in the process. This glass shows high thermal stability. Potential applications of the glasses are bottles, buildings and various ornamental uses. So this is a significant study. And we conducted it in the lab scale. Now we are trying to increase the scale of the operation. Similar way, we tried to remove the immobilize the metal loaded sludge produced during the process of battery industry effluent treatment. The battery industrial effluent we collected small scale industry in Kolkata. And we used an adsorbent prepared from the tannery industrial sludge. So this biosorbent was able to remove more than 90%, 96% of various heavy metals. You know that battery industry contains various toxic metal like lead, cadmium, nickel, cobalt, all these things. So while this process can reduce the metals from the liquid effluent, but in turn solid waste is generated. So this solid waste was again immobilized in the glass matrix. And you can see up to 30% of metal loaded sludge could be immobilized into the glass matrix. So we compared with the 30% control with the 30% metal laden sludge. This since this is a colored glass, so these potential applications, building blocks, ornamental, and then amber colored bottles, these are the out possible products for this glass and significantly no leaching of metal was observed in the glass samples. This is the scenario of the printing industry effluent. We collected highly concentrated printing industry effluent which contains considerable amount of lead in the effluent. So we used a combi combined process of microfiltration as and adsorption in the for treating of this high co contaminated effluent. And then we found that higher than 99% removal of lead is achieved in the combination process. So treated water is produced. <coughs> higher than 99.9% reduction of POC and uh, so is the COD removal. Treated effluent, effect of this treated effluent was studied for the agricultural use. So seed germination study was conducted and see the bi biological parameters were assessed in the produced seed as well as in the saplings. So the treated water did not show any toxic effect. Stress enzyme and all the parameters were carried out which showed 
no significant variation compared with the fresh water system. And again, the sludge, solid sludge produced in the process was used to imbibe into bricks. Top spin bisorbent was immobilized in clay to produce bricks. And the bricks were characterized, which found reasonable compressive strength. So this is a complete, complete circle of the process. So we are not disposing any waste into the environment in terms of liquid as well as solid. And the treated water can be used for agricultural purposes. Now coming to the membrane photobioreactor process. This is, I um, told earlier, this is a new process, indigenous process developed in CGCRI for producing value added product from the wastewater. This is a novel membrane photobioreactor system. Membrane module is inserted inside the photobioreactor. What is the purpose? These membranes are hydrophobically treated. A special treatment is given on this membrane, which allows water droplet to retain on the membrane. You can see the picture. And this is the microstructure. You can see a network structure of one polymeric selective polymer treatment is given in this membrane to retain its hydrophobic property. So these membranes act as a nano bubble sparger inside the photobioreactor. You know, in the conventional photobioreactor system, CO2 sparging is a problem. It cannot uh, provide CO2 efficiently inside the photobioreactor. So large amount of CO2 is lost which is again disposed into the environment. So to overcome this problem, we have designed this membrane system. Through this, CO2 can be effectively dissolution will be possible into the culture media. Algae can take the sufficient CO2 from the liquid media and in turn it will high gas liquid mass transfer coefficient will be achieved as well as high biomass growth rate will be achieved. So this is done with ratio to arthrospira species and we found enhanced biomass growth as well as high CO2 mass transfer coefficient. So this is day one, this is day six. This is the com complete process of membrane technology for algal biofuel production. This is the membrane photobioactor system. Photo membrane module is inserted and we provide simulated CO2 in the flue gas simulated composition is used and wastewater is used to use brewery industry effluent for biomass production. In turn, the treated water is produced and we take the microalgal suspension. So harvesting of the biomass is for biofuel production. Commercially, this is a major drawback of the process because efficient harvesting, unless the technology is discovered, it provides the, it restricts the economy of the process, high cost process. So the mem we used a different membrane for this biomass harvesting process. This is a ceramic ultrafiltration membrane with high hydrophilicity. Why high hydrophilicity? To lower the membrane fouling because the biomass will be suspended and clog the membrane pores gradually. So if we can increase the hydrophilicity of the membrane surface, it will result in low flux and low fouling. So what is the advantage? The treated water can be again recycled membrane photobioreactor process for biomass production. And in turn, we can concentrate the biomass. So we found biodiesel, we extracted biodiesel, about 38% we could achieve. We are in the process to increase this more. And in this process, the 99.9% removal of BOT, TOC and nitrate was accomplished. So this is the schematic of membrane-based process for biomass and biofuel production. And altogether, this process results in CO2 sequestration. So these are various types of membrane module for photobioreactor study. This is the lab scale membrane photobioreactor for biomass production. And this is the during various days of membrane and various condition for the biomass production. This is the growth rate we achieved for the various condition like four hour interval, 24 hour interval, interval of CO2. So we found 24 hour interval of CO2 providing is the optimum condition for biomass growth.
and then we compare the characteristic of the domestic effluent used before and after membrane photobioreactor process we could find while before the process raw effluent contained this much range of co2 cod after the algal treatment it goes around this much reduced content over 95 percent reduction 98 percent reduction so is other parameters and large considerable 99 percent removal of toc is achieved in the process so even oil and grease also could be significantly reduced by the microalgal process so this process can turn as a viable media for eco-friendly process for wastewater treatment so we perform industrial tannery effluent also in the photobioreactor process and we found that the similar way of well, pattern is obtained. So, comparison of the system with other available system, we can see we observed our performance efficiency. So, we found that bubble diffuser shows very high value of mass transfer coefficient. Hollow fiber membrane is in this range, and this is our ceramic membrane, hydrophobic ceramic membrane based system. So, we are apart. apart apart from hollow fiber but lower from the bubble diffuser range so this is the research finding and we are trying to improve still more to make this process highly competitive and this is the biomass productivity and in the photobioreactor so we found high biomass productivity compared to these processes and the process result in the co considerable amount of co2 fixation so this is the overall schematic of our reactor process. This is the photobioreactor. We provide light source. So this is the wastewater collected from the feed tank to the membrane photobioreactor. This is the simulated flue gas we are using as a CO2 source through the membrane. The CO2 is dissolution is accomplished in the culture medium. And we are then collecting the algal biomass then again we are harvesting it to the membrane system and extract biofuel and in turn the treated wastewater is produced which can be used for multi facet applications so this is the toc removal total organic carbon removal from brewery industrial effluent during algal treatment you can see that initially it was in this range and after seven days of algal treatment it uh, comes to almost zero toc <coughs> So this is the biodiesel we could produce from our lab scale photobioreactor and at optimized condition about 41 weight percent of lipid could be extracted resulting in 38 weight percent biodiesel. So we are now using um, to um, special catalyst for this biodiesel processing. So this will increase the efficiency of the process. And this is the microstructure of the membrane microfiltration and ultrafiltration membrane after the biomass harvesting process. So biomass harvesting is a big um, challenge in efficient biomass harvesting. So we try to overcome this problem using our ceramic MF and UF membrane. So you can observe this is the after use membrane microstructure of MF membrane and UF membrane. So these membranes could be regenerated because this is the ceramic membrane. So we could effectively clean the membrane and over 92% to 95% regeneration of pyramid flux was achieved after the biomass harvesting process. This is the treatment of kitchen wastewater using ceramic membrane based bioreactor. This is a pilot plant installed in the premises of our institute. So it is um, gray water is collected from the CGCRI canteen and treated in this pilot MDR process for reuse again in the CGCRI gardening and floor washing and various other purposes. So this is a water recycling project. So this is the various conditions maintained in the photobioreactor. So we have the aeration tank volume 1000 liter and fill membrane treated water collection tank of 100 liter. So we maintain certain conditions of activated sludge dose as well as oxygenation rate. 
to exit the office. This is the COD and ability reduction in the kitchen wastewater during the process. So considerable removal could be achieved during various days of treatment. And this is the um, detail characterization. So this is the CGCRI canteen wastewater COD 1600 to 3500 ppm. After by treatment, it goes to 200 to 320 ppm while after MBR treatment it goes to 40 to 55 ppm. Considerable amount of oil and grease could be removed. BOD removal is also acid and TOSS removal is all, already acid. So the <clears throat> potential of the ceramic membrane processes. What are the major potential and advantages? The processes are cost friendly process for treatment and recycling of various kinds of industrial equipment and gray water. Combination of ceramic membrane technology and biosorbent enables one stage treatment of equipment with remediation of dyes, heavy metals and other contaminants, producing RO quality feed. Producing the RO quality feed is a big challenge in industries because you know that RO membranes are of Amstrom size. So unless the pretreatment part is successfully carried out, it cannot be provided to the RO unit. So the, this process can provide an effective pretreatment for the RO process. The ceramic membranes are operable under extreme pH of effluent. This is a bigger part allows rigorous cleaning, thus low fouling and higher yield process. It enables lower sludge production, lower space requirement, modular in design and therefore is Integrated process enables recycling of wastewater, thus helps in preventing large amount of freshwater consumption. However, there are certain challenges towards acceptance of the ceramic membrane based technology. What are those major challenges? One is the pore size reduction of ceramic membranes to nanofiltration and reverse osmosis range. Actually, some problem happened. My slides went off. Actually. Yes, ma'am. There was some internet, uh, network issue. Okay. So I am just concluding because um, so they, these are the challenges that ceramic addressing the ceramic. Yes, so the pore size reduction is a challenge because this is a high temperature process during the preparation in the range of 1400 to 1500 degrees centigrade. Controlling of the pore size is a big challenge. Address these issues. Application of selective nanoparticles, graphene oxide like materials are now being considered to provide nanoporous membrane to obtain the nanofiltration properties and then cost reduction of the membrane is a big issue compared to the polymeric material because they are of low cost compared to that processing cost of the ceramic membrane is high so research study is going on towards developing low cost raw material as well as the manufacturing cost to lower 
so that the and considering some good alternatives like bentonite clay hydroxyapatite and other types of clay which would in turn result in reduction of the membrane cost so what are the future potential of such processes in a general way water shortage problems are currently one of the major issues in the world and recycling of is of growing necessary in this respect application of ceramic membranes <clears throat> has continuously been increased over the past 20 years since the membranes are capable of treatment of waste liquid and gases they can prepare purified drinking water domestic water and food and beverage industrial waste water product recovery from industrial processes is possible due to the robustness the membrane process could be useful for various industries and their longevity is quite high so they can provide a reliable candidate once the you know, capital cost may be high but the operating cost will be definitely lower and membrane replacement cost can be considerably eliminated so the industries are now gradually inclined to such type of membranes so i acknowledge um, council of scientific and industrial research department of science and technology science and engineering research board department of biotechnology for providing funding for our research studies and director of csr cgci for granting permission and i thank once again the organizers for providing me the opportunity and thank you all for your patient hearing thank you thank you so much thank you so much for the wonderful work which you shared on ceremonies i request participants to help any questions they can unmute them or they can even they can type in the chat type in the chat I have a question. Yes. Ma'am, uh, regarding the membranes uh, which are used, there might be some saturation point or how long can they be used? Do they need to be replaced after a certain duration? Yeah. The ceramic membranes, you know, these are of inert material, so their longevity is quite high. In our community plants, we have observed the arsenic iron treatment processes. These membranes are running for 10 to 12 years even. So in between, they require some maintenance like cleaning and all. If they can, that can be done properly, then this can be used for year long. Yes. So they, these are quite long lasting ones. Yes. yes. So any other question from the participant side? Or if they would like to interact? I thank you so much, ma'am, for on behalf of the Civil Engineering Department of IPS Academy for taking time for out of your busy schedule and enlightening us over such a wonderful topic. The work you have carried out is really inspirational, and I we personally thank you for this wonderful talk, ma'am. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So the participants next session will be starting at 12 a.m. So we'll take a break of five minutes and we will be back again. <laughs>